and this is Stitches TV. Now today I'm going to show you how easy it is to copy your favourite clothes and to demonstrate this I'm going to use my daughter's favourite skinny flare leggings which I'm going to trace off, make a pattern and then make a pair out of this stretch velour fabric. When copying a piece of clothing, and if you are making a paper pattern version of it, can I really recommend that you lay your paper on top of something soft? So, so I've laid mine on top of this yoga mat, but it could just as well be on a rug, a carpet or a towel, just so long as it's soft, because what happens is you're going to either use a tracing wheel like this or if you haven't got a tracing wheel you're going to use a pin but if what you're tracing off is quite two-dimensional you can probably get away with just drawing around the outside of it now the other thing is you need to get whatever it is that you are tracing off you need to get it in a as much of a two-dimensional way as possible. So iron your thing to make it really flat. Now not all things are going to be flat, but you can probably make them fairly flat. And these leggings, as you can see, even though they were originally stretched out at the knee, I was able to steam it out and make it as flat as possible. Now the leggings that I'm doing today, they seem to have been cut on a fold here, there's no side seam here, there's only an inner, an inner side seam. And usually on trousers, the crotch at the front has a smaller curve than it does at the back. But because these leggings are for teeny tiny people, it seems to be the same. But the waistline at the front comes down lower than at the back, which is normal. So I just wanted to point out those things. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I'm doing. So because my side seam is on the fold, I have folded my fabric. And all I'm going to do is, I'll do the easy one first, which is just to trace off a little bit bigger the edge of the side seam, the inside leg of the side seam. Now you really must remember to allow a seam allowance. Now that is not a regular seam allowance, but you'll do it properly. Now where these tracing wheels come in handy are for bits like this. So if I don't want to unpick that, how am I going to mark where that is? So, this tracing wheel with pins on it will punch through all the fabrics. But if you're worried about damaging the fabric, then just use a pin. So just push the pin following the curve of that crotch line. Now I can see it's a little bit gathered there, so I'm going to go straight up here with my pin. Now I'm going to do two lines for the waistline, one following this line and then one following the line at the back which is going to be a bit higher. So I use the tracing wheel for that. So the front one is about there and then the back one is about two centimeters higher but I can adjust it afterwards so remember to add seam allowances yeah now we'll do a close-up of this so are you able to see 
the, the marks that I made just with the pen. So remember, for me, my front was the same as my back, which is really strange. So I'm just going to join up those dots with a pen line like that. Now, this is the front and back of my trousers, but the back came up roughly higher like that. So I'll just write back there, and then the front came down a bit lower, like that, so I'll put that there. But both of them followed the same shape, although I know normally there would be a bit more shape there but you could do that. Now, do not forget to do your seam allowance. So, I don't know what your seam allowance is gonna be, but let's say we're doing something like that, and something like that, and then something like that. So now I'm gonna cut that out. But um, first of all, I'm just going to cut it all together according to the big size. But then for the front, I'll just cut the front out so it goes down. Right, so after I cut it out, I had to remember to cut the, the front lower and make sure I had um, a seam allowance there. And then what happens is, that's my pattern. And this is the front and that's the back. There's no outside side seam, so you just cut two like that. My leggings have got like a, a high waisted waistband, and that simply is, well they've done it as one piece of folded material, I might do it as we are, I think I'll do the same. So it's one piece of folded over material it's just a rectangle I can tell because I can see the grain of the fabric it's not going at an angle it's simply a rectangle so I'm just going to measure that cut it to the fold and and do it double that width I just cut one of those so for the waistband I'm just folding over the paper to a similar to a similar sort of width and then I need to fold it again just check the size make sure I've got it the right size yep that looks like the right size so it's folded that way folded that way and it'll get stitched up there. So that's going to be the waistband. Right, so, so that's quite easy, isn't it, really? So we've got the front, and because it's cut in the fold, we've got the back. So we've got the waistband as well, and that's going to get attached onto the top, like that. So I just need to cut it out of her fabric. When you sew with velvety fabrics, you do need to pay attention to the nap. So the nap is when your fabric goes in a particular direction. So with velvets, the smooth, it being smooth and lighter, for me, it has to go down. So all my pattern pieces have to go in that direction Otherwise, one leg will look light and the other leg would look dark. So you usually have to buy a bit more fabric when you have a nap in your fabric. Right, all I have to do now is cut it out. So I just cut out this leg without recording. So I'm gonna cut out the other one and tell you what I'm doing. But basically, when you cut out one of your legs, remember to flop over and do a mirror version of what you just did. So I'm not going to cut on the side of the fold at the moment because I need to show you something. So I'm cutting out the crotch, doing 
just exactly the same as those teeny weeny leggings. Come down here. So I'm cutting my leggings out with the fabric going in the same direction because my leggings, my fabric has got a pile. Now another thing that I'm doing is I've remembered she wants them extra flared. So I'm going to have to create an outer side seam here. So I've just added a seam lapse to where that's on the fold. And, and then when I think it's right to, I'm going to start kicking out because she wants them extra flared. Now it's easier to just cut the front and the back the same and then afterwards I can shape the front. So I'm making sure again that the pile is going down and the stretch is going across. And it's just a rectangle. It's not difficult. So I'll cut out my rectangle and then that's it, I'm done. I'll be ready to sew. Right, because I want to do this uh, really quickly, I'm going to use the overlocker, but I really want you to know that this is totally, totally possible to do with just a zigzag stitch on a normal sewing machine. And to prove it to you, I'm going to show you a pair of skinny flares, exactly the same, that my son made when he was about 12 years old. He made it as a present for my daughter. So look, honestly, my son made these and she wears them almost every day, even now, to go to school. So that was made with just a zigzag stitch on an ordinary, I think it was one of those Charles machines. But then to be honest, I then changed the needle to a twin needle because I do prefer twin needle for the hem. begin, if you have an outside side seam, let's begin with that. So notches are just tiny little slits, okay, just like that. So you, like I said, you use whatever you want. We did actually include a seam allowance. Now if I'm just going to use the overlocker, I should trim it all off. But her leggings were getting a little bit small, so mm, I'm not sure. Let's see. So with stretchy fabric, sometimes it's, rather than driving on, it's easier to lift the foot and just begin. So I've got my notches, I'm just going to line them up. But you do whatever you want. Travel all the way down that out outer leg side seam if you have a side seam with my fabric right sides together and I've definitely got one front and one back I'm going to do exactly the same now on this inside leg seam so do you see how quickly it comes together so I've done one leg with the front and the back or if it was cut to a fold, you just close it, do the inside seam. I have actually overlocked the hem. Now do exactly the same to the other leg. Now, I want you to put one leg the right way round and one leg the wrong way round. Trouser right way round, and that's my front there because it comes down a little bit. And... This is the right way round. Wrong way round, right way round. 
So I get the, the leg that is the right way round and I simply put it inside. But what's important is that you match up the crotch. So now you need a pin or a clip. You've got to match up the crotch and match up the front because you're going to sew around here and then you need to match up the back so you sew can you see that so that's the inside there the leg the fabric is right sides together and you're going to sew all the way around this area here that's the back crotch and that's the front crotch so I'm going to start at the the back now it isn't a very long distance for me because my daughter's got a tiny bottom so I don't feel like I need any notches but I'll get it under there we're going around the crotch so this is the back part I've matched up the the seams of the inside seams on the coming around the back and I'm going to come up the front and ignore the fact that they don't match so this is coming up to the front waist Now, sometimes crotch seams need reinforcing. So it's up to you if you go in and sew with a sewing machine and reinforce that seam. But if you do, you've got to use a zigzag or a lightning stitch because it has to stretch because we're using stretch fabric. So look, that's what you end up with. Can you see that? So now, when we pull the leg out, it should all start to make sense. So look. Remain aware of what's the front and what's the back. Or well, maybe you don't need to, but I want to. But put them to one side. So this is that rectangle. So the first thing we do is fold it over stitch along here so you should end up with that now you're gonna fold it wrong sides together okay this is wrong sides together which is quite unusual and get everything nice and flat now I think you definitely um, you definitely need some sort of clips or pins for this so I'm going to go and get some but when you have got it nice and flat that will get attached onto there now you need to kind of find a way to keep these held together and you can either use a large zigzag stitch to hold it together or I'm just going to use the overlocker just as a way of like a stay stitch of holding them together but that's what's going to be going on now when I did that I didn't say this I did actually stretch it as I as I sewed it even though I was using the overlocker because I probably need to stretch it a bit when I put it on here now this is an important thing and you mark it out however you want we need to know where more or less the quarter bits are the reason why you do that if you haven't figured it out already is we're going to be attaching it and we need to line it up and we probably need to stretch it a little bit now the first thing I want to do you may not have this problem I want to make sure that that grain the smooth bit is the same as that so that's the way up I want it to be so therefore I need to turn it upside down for attaching it so my orange one is going to be in line 
with the front okay I'm doing my fabric right sides together the side seam on the band needs to go with the side seam on the leggings my pink one needs to go to the other side seam and then finally the blue one needs to match up with the side seam at the back now look how much slack there is okay between the sections so when you overlock it or when you sew it you've got to stretch it start wherever you want I'm going to sew it I think with the band on the top and the leggings on the bottom now I'm gonna to have to dry in and I'm gonna trim off the overlock edge that um, that I did before so see how I'm stretching it as I sew, trying to keep it all flat. Now if you're really nervous about this, you could always zigzag it on the sewing machine. I think it would be a lot, lot easier to do on the sewing machine than on an overlocker so you're going to work all the way around so when it's done it's like this now it would be easier to do it zigzag first with a sewing machine and then overlock it but if you're experienced then you'll be fine but look at that so it's nice and stretchy That is nice isn't it that's a really nice finish so it's just overlocked like that overlocked in there um, but I am going to go in and reinforce the crotch with like a zigzag, a zigzag stitch thank you so much for watching and let me know if you want me to show you more videos where we copy our existing clothes. Bye!